Good morning, and what a joyous day it is indeed. He is risen, he is risen, he is risen indeed. On this Easter Sunday, we come together in jubilee to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is a day that we remember not only that Jesus gave his life for us on the cross, but that through his resurrection, his new life that he was given, so too are we given new life. This morning, we will spend some time rediscovering the stories around Jesus' resurrection, because even though this is a story we recall each and every year, what I've learned is that there always seems to be something new to take away from it. And so here's what I know. Three days after Jesus was laid in the tomb, after he'd had his final breaths on the cross, Mary Magdalene, along with some other women, were at his uh, tomb, and they went there to perform a sacred ritual, as they do for any deceased person. They had oils and spices, but she arrived, and she began the process of wanting to cleanse Jesus' body, but when she got there, the tomb was empty. Scripture tells us that the only thing left in the tomb were the white bands of cloth Jesus' body had been wrapped in. Her immediate thought was that someone had purposely taken Jesus' body to prevent this ritual from occurring, a sort of final slap in the face. And so she found herself standing outside that tomb, weeping. While she's mourning, the Gospel of John tells us that two angels appeared and said, Woman, why are you crying? After Mary Magdalene explained to the angels about Jesus' body missing, Scripture says she turned and she saw Jesus standing there, though she did not realize at the time who it was. It wasn't until he said her name, Mary, that she became amazed and could not believe her eyes. Jesus told her that he was in the in-between, having not yet ascended to God, but certainly not dead. And he told her, go, tell the others what you have seen. And so Mary runs, and she tells the other disciples, and, you know, can you imagine? It would have been quite the unbelievable story for a few reasons. One, Mary is a woman, so she's believed to be less worthy in her storytelling than her male counterparts. They simply could not believe that Jesus would have chosen to reveal himself to a woman. The second, Jesus resurrecting from the dead was pretty unbelievable. And the third one... Sometimes, in truth, it can be really hard to believe what we can't see. But more on that later. So here the male disciples are. They've heard what Mary has to say, and so they take off running to the tomb to see for themselves. And once they get there, Scripture says they see it empty, and they wonder what had happened. Jesus, completely able to predict the disciples' responses, even while awaiting ascension, must have known this because he chose to appear to the male disciples a bit later. First, there were two disciples on the road to Emmaus. We know from Scripture that Jesus had a full conversation with these two disciples before they realized who he was. And after seeing Jesus, they ran to Jerusalem to tell the others what they had seen. The Gospel of Luke goes on to say that while these two men were relaying what happened, Jesus appeared in a room and startled them. As the disciples stared at him as if he were a ghost, Scripture says, Jesus calmly goes, Why are you troubled? And why do you have doubts in your mind? And he lifted his hands and showed them the wounds still there from being hung on the cross. This level of proof was undeniable. Jesus told the disciples that now it's their task to carry on the story, to go and tell others about what they had seen, what they had heard, and what they'd learned from Jesus in their time with him as disciples. And we know from the stories of Scripture that the disciples did this, even though it cost many of them greatly. But that's not really what today is about. Today, we reflect on the wonder and amazement the disciples experienced as Jesus appeared before them, showing proof that he had indeed resurrected. Scripture tells us that wonder and amazement each time was preceded by one tiny, minuscule, huge, and at times ornery thing, doubt. Perhaps it is a cynic in me, but I get it. I seriously relate to doubting things that I just 
seem, in my mind, unimaginable. I mean, if I'd run in this morning and said, guys, you won't believe what I just saw. Jesus appeared right before me, wounds in his hand. He is so not dead. He is resurrected. And if I said this to you in a way where it was obvious that I truly believed it, how would you respond? Some of you might chuckle and assume I'm joking. For those of you that quickly realize that I'm serious, you might become concerned. Perhaps the others would just say, eh, whatever. But the truth of the matter is, this is what the disciples did. They went to everyone they could find and said, hey, let me tell you what happened. And it's this truly unbelievable thing. I often wonder why we do that. Why is it that when we hear something unbelievable, our first instinct is to doubt, to think mm, there's no way that could be true. There's probably a million reasons why we do that. What I do know for certain is that collectively, we tend to doubt first and believe later. And honestly, it makes sense to me. Even now, we live in this land of, you know what, show pictures or it didn't happen, or live stream it so we know it's really happening. We are obsessed with seeing things for ourselves. Though I find that sometimes when things are too big or too hard, that even seeing doesn't mean that we believe it. That is probably a talk for another time. What I also know is that Jesus didn't seem too bothered. He didn't seem bothered at knowing that the disciples would need some type of proof in the same way he knew Peter would deny him three times, the same way he knew Judas had already betrayed him, Jesus knew that the disciples would need more than just an empty tomb to really understand what was happening. And I think that stands true today, that Jesus probably knows that on some level, we still need proof. Proof of what? I think that's probably individualized. I know I sometimes need proof of goodness and hope. Sometimes the world feels so bleak that I often find myself asking for a sign of hope, something that doesn't make me sad or scared. On this Easter Sunday, what do you need proof of? Do you need proof that God exists at all? Some sort of sign that God is really there? some kind of proof about whether a decision is a good one or a bad one. Do you need a lightning bolt or something? Some might just want proof that believing is somehow worth it or worthy even. So on this Easter, what is it that you need proof of? Because here's what I know to be true. Jesus free and with a willing heart, chose to die for the forgiveness of our sins. And three days after he died, that tomb was empty. Jesus resurrected then and in our hearts now. And Jesus resurrects each and every year without fail. Even when we doubt it, Jesus rises you know, I think we tell this story over and over because after about a, a year of living day in and day out, I think maybe our hearts need the reminder. Maybe this is the story of hope we've been looking for, that Jesus' suffering on the cross, while horrible, really wasn't the end of things. It was, in many ways, a beginning. Jesus chose to give his life so that we could live. But it didn't end there. Jesus rose and in doing so inspired his disciples to never stop telling the story. And they haven't, because here we are thousands of years later and we are still telling the story. So today we celebrate the risen Christ, resurrected from the dead, given a new life, May we receive this as true and certain, and may we rejoice in the privilege of knowing it, because not everyone does.
May we pick up the charge, just like the disciples did the day Jesus appeared to them, the charge of remembering to tell the story. And so I leave you with this. Will we remember that it is indeed okay to doubt and it is okay to believe and it is okay to do both? It's okay to believe in the impossible and to trust Jesus when he appears to us. And will we remember that knowing is just the first step? That the second step is sharing what we know with others? Will we remember on this day and the days to come to tell the story of Jesus' sacred love for us and about his resurrection from the dead? I pray that we do because he is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Amen.